Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and oh do we have a fun one today. So today we are going to uh, give ourselves a little hobby challenge. And that challenge is going to be to paint a 2,000 point army in 24 hours. Here I have an ogre army uh, with the release of the Maw Tribes book. I thought it would be fun to see, to get out all these old ogres that I had, uh, restore them up a little bit, uh, and get them ready for the paintbrush and see if we couldn't just knock out a whole army in 24 hours. So we're gonna do a little bit of a challenge. Um, but before I start the official clock, I wanted to uh, kind of set up what I'm gonna be doing here because this is gonna be an unusual video in that there'll be some clips of things. We're gonna go sort of step by step and I'm gonna talk about all the tricks and tips and techniques I use to achieve uh, high quality results fast. Uh, and this one's gonna be a real challenge to go super fast. So we'll see how it works out. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be successful at this, but hey, you gotta push yourself, right? So we're gonna really push the speed muscle. Now, ogres represent a pretty uh, easy way to accomplish something like this, just because it's less bodies, they're bigger space, they're much more uniform, and they have like a lot of flesh and simple materials. They're not, they don't tend to be too covered in nonsense, although some of these are uh, quite detailed figures, uh, and that's fine, but it's still less of them. Their size also lends itself to doing stuff with the airbrush or something like that. So we've got a bunch of different ogres here of different kinds, and they've been prepared. Now, I'm not counting their preparation in the 24 hours. I understand, but this is can I paint the whole army in 24 hours. So they've been, uh, you know, cleaned up and zenithal primed and are ready to go. Their bases were also made and are zenithal and also ready to go off camera. Um, all told, the preparation was maybe six hours to get the army back to, to restoration. That is to say, to clean up things and to fill gaps and restore broken pieces, because this army had been sitting on a you know shelf forever. And then to create the bases and then, because uh, obviously these guys are all sitting on old squares right now. So to create the bases and texture them and prime them and get everything ready. So... Uh, that's what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna walk you through all the steps that I do here to get these guys going fast. But I thought first I would start with just kind of some of the paints I'm gonna use so you kind of understand because I won't have a chance to show it later. So these guys obviously have a lot of flesh, so we wanna really hone in there and make that look interesting. To that end, we've got a nice mixture of paints here. So we've got some African Shadow from Scale 75, some Bugman's Glow from Citadel, some Flesh 3 from War Colors, Harvester Flesh from Scale 75, and some Olive Flesh for a highlight from Pro Acryl. So there we go with those, and uh, we, for their pants, most of them have some nice pants. We're gonna give them some nice blue pants, which will be a nice mix of deep blue and Caspian blue, and then we'll probably use a little bit of that Olive Flesh to highlight. And then they have some belts and leathers and stuff like that. So for that, we're going to use some mahogany and some light umber. And then we'll actually take it down with some of the deep blue mixed in because that'll make a nice dark color. And we'll bring it up again with the olive flesh. Um, this is one of the tricks to doing a lot of speed painting. You use universal highlights and shadows can help that. Um, having similar colors and a limited palette used throughout your army can absolutely expedite the process. And that's the other thing, before you begin a project like this, you wanna make sure you understand how things are gonna be painted, especially the major areas of your figures. And these guys have other things that are you know, metal and stuff like that. And for that, we'll just use some standard Vallejo metal colors, some steel and things like that. We'll probably do some fast rust and things of that nature. But for the most part, you know, they have hair and beards and things, and we'll we'll color those in pretty standardly. For wood, we'll use our old friend uh, Scale 75 Ink Intensity Wood, since that's basically wood in a bottle, and that makes that really easy. Uh, and you'll, you'll see me use some other things, and I will narrate the other pieces as we get to those sections, but I wanted to give you the major colors now. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to start with an anti-zenithal highlight, so a natal highlight, I believe is what it's called, or natal low light, I don't know. 
I'm going to shoot them from below with some whole red to create a universal shadow. This is a nice, deep, warm red color, um, and it'll work well with the flesh. It'll work well as a shadow to the blue because it'll end up being, uh, it'll end up sort of turning a deep, dark purple, which will be great. Uh, and it'll work well with the brown where it'll give a nice low light. So basically we're gonna take each of the ogres and turn them over where he's still very dark. You can see how dark they are from below. And we're gonna shoot a bunch of red up at that angle, okay? Then we're just gonna get into the painting. So uh, what I'll do is obviously you're not gonna see me paint the whole army because I, I think a 24 hour video, even at uh, a highly, highly compressed speed would still be a bit too long to watch. But that's the general concept of what we're gonna do. So uh, I have my stopwatch here on my phone. As soon as I start painting, I'll hit start. Uh, I, you know, obviously I'll be able to pause myself in the middle uh, because it's, you know, fairly critical that I don't, uh, that I, <laughs> it's fairly critical that I do be able to stop every so often to say, use the bathroom or something like that. But this is 24 hours of painting time, uh, which I'm gonna do in a single weekend. Uh, we're not gonna sleep a lot. We're just gonna paint, paint, paint and get these bad boys, these fat boys on the table. So with that, we're gonna kick it off and uh, we'll pick back up over in the airbrush booth. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna record me shooting them from below though, that'll be on the time uh, because it's just, it, you've seen me do it in previous videos. I'm just using a color to literally uh, spray them at a down or at an upward angle like this. Um, nothing real interesting there. So I'll do that off camera and then we'll pick back up and uh, you'll see me spraying the flesh because that's what we're gonna start with since that's the biggest and most obvious and important color for a lot of these ogres. So back in a moment. All right, so we're in the airbrush booth here and I'm narrating this because uh, it's just very noisy. So as you can see, we're 11 you know, minutes in or whatever from what I'm doing. Uh, which was the first 11 minutes was just quickly spraying the undercoat of whole red. And so now we're do using a little uh, Bugman's Glow, which is actually a, a color I quite like in the, uh, in, in the Citadel range. And we're doing a little undercoat. Uh, and the goal here is very thin. So as if you've seen how I work with the airbrush previously, you know that I'm working very, 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 very thin. Uh, so this is probably, let's, let's put a number on that. This is probably five or six to one thinner to paint, okay? Now, Bugman's Glow is a, a base color within the Citadel range, so it's quite intense. But the goal here was just to get a nice all-over coat of a deep red undershade, but still letting the zenithal show through, okay? So that took about 17 minutes to do the whole army. Uh, I I'm going to start off all these. So then we add in a little flesh three from War Colors. Same dilution ratio. Uh, but now what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and hit just the highlights. Uh, so you're going to see, once I get back on camera here, as per standard for me, uh, you're going to see how I'm focusing in on you know upper areas. But I'm still covering a fair amount of the ogre. Uh, this is bringing some uh, brighter Caucasian flesh tones into the uh, into the ogre and covering some of that red. The Bugman's Glow was really more about uh, undercoating and providing the the tone for the skin more than it was actually the skin itself. It's a good base. So. Now we're going to take a step up again. We're up to 43 minutes. That one took a little longer because I had to be a little more careful, right? So that was maybe 15 minutes. Now we're going to go with some Flesh 3 and Harvester Flesh, which is another brighter pinker flesh. And so this is going to be one of those times where uh, now I'm focusing in on even less of the Ogre. Uh, so again, hitting things like the top of his head. I'm always shooting down the front of the face. Uh, I'm using, like, the, the faces of these ogres have great features, but they have really, really deep recesses. So you can use your airbrush to just shoot straight down that face and really make a lot of, of effective highlights over things like their eyebrow ridges and the cheekbones and stuff like that. As per usual, I am still just hitting the tops of the muscles 
uh, tops of the shoulders, hands. Um, I always shoot down the tops of the knuckles. So from the top knuckle down, I change my angle just to get that bright light because most people are making fists. And when you make a fist, your, uh, your knuckles tend to go white. So now we're up to an hour. Okay. Uh, and this time I have a little bit of a, uh, uh, a little bit of a, a wash, as you can see here. So this is some Reichland Flesh Shade, some Agrax Earth Shade, and some Flow Improver. Now, the goal here is not to wash the whole model. Instead, what you'll see is I grabbed a nice big brush, and I'm going to hit all of the relevant areas where there would be deep shadows that might have been obliterated by the airbrush. So specifically, you'll see how I'm hitting like the face, the ears, the lower part of the face. I'll go do the hands and in between the fingies, right? where I can see them. Basically, any place where I would want a little bit more life and red and sort of vitae injected back into the model, especially in those very small details. So again, like here on the back of the, uh, where his sort of folds <laughs> meet his pants, and, you know, and, and really honing in on that face, making sure we bring out that detail. That wash here is a nice quick way to bring that facial detail out, but I wouldn't want to wash the whole model. The airbrush is going to do all the major folds on the muscles. That took a little longer, so now we're up to about an hour and a half into this project. And we're going to go back in with just Harvester Flesh, so just my highlight color. Again, this is very thin now, so I'm working about 6 to 1. And I'm going to just go ahead and reinforce some of those highlights. So this is sort of the edges of their pecs, the very top of the knuckles that are facing up, the very top of the sternocleidomastoids, uh, and upper shoulder muscles, like those kinds of elements. Just really bringing that highlight up, okay? So, but wait, there's still more. We're not done yet. Uh, so now we're up to an hour 43, relatively quick step because I have to be careful, but it's also covering very little. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that Harvester Flesh and mix in a little Olive Flesh, which is a really nice color from Pro Acryl uh, that has a lot of obviously like warm white tone to it. And here I'm hitting just the tippy tippy tops, right? The very top of the shoulder, the very top of the skull, the very top of the that that uh, neck and, and sternocleidomastoid muscle. And that's it, right? The goal here was to be like, really 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 specific so and then that's that's the skin done like we're calling that in a speed paint army that's what we're doing and you notice there i started very dark and worked my way all the way up here with the pants i'm going to do the same thing so that was some uh deep blue from scale 75 and that's going to be my base for the paint but again working very thin so this is about eight or nine to one thinner to paint okay and again the goal here is to let the zenithal tell part of the story to work in a nice thin layer of blue over the pants which are already zenithaled i wanted to give them a nice blue pant almost like a, a denim ish color uh so that's what you'll see me work in here uh but this dark blue will work well with the shadows it acts as a great shadow color to build up additional layers with, you know, my airbrush. And you can see how some of that highlighting is preserved and able to continue. So then the next step, and that took a little while because the pants I had to be careful. So 2.14, two hours, 14 minutes in. Uh, not bad. We're making good progress. And so now we're going to take a little bit of, I didn't show the paints like a, like a dum-dum. Uh, but what I did is I mixed up uh, a little bit of a lighter blue from Scale 75, but it's very faded. Basically, I mixed in a, a blue-gray. Uh, specifically, this was Bearing Blue mixed in there. And again, just hit some highlights, like reinforce those colors. Top of the knee, his big giant butt, the tops of his folds on, on the backs of his legs, those kinds of things. And then finally... Uh, and so here we're at almost two and a half hours in. Now we've got uh, just the straight uh, bearing blue uh, along with a little bit of olive flesh. So we've gone completely to a lighter color. 
And now I'm going to hit those high, high highlights. By the way, the ratio here is still 8 to 1 thinner, but it's also about 3 to 1 blue to white. So like the white is a very minimal impact here. I'm not looking to completely desaturate this blue. I'm not looking to blow the light out. The skin should be brighter. The pants are lower on the model. They're a darker color naturally, They would, and they're a very matte material, so they should not be very bright like the satin skin. And basically, there we go. That's airbrushing done. Touch it up, and now we're going over to the painting booth. All right, so we're back over at the desk. All the airbrushing is complete. This is the stage all my ogres are at. Uh, we are at, I, I pause the clock here uh, so I could talk for a moment. So, but you can see we're at three hours and four minutes uh, to bring basically the whole army up to this stage, which I feel like is pretty good. We've got nice tonal variation in our skin. Uh, the face is well defined. You can see we've got all our, our nice shadows picked out there. Our pants have some highlights, stuff like that. So now what I do is, one of the common things I see people do with batch painting is they'll do like one little thing. Like I'll do these little beard, this is his little beard, and then I'll put him to the side, and then I'll grab the next dude, and then I'll do his little beard, and then I'll put him to the side, and then I'll grab the next dude. That's just inefficient. Like I, you, you think you're being efficient in this sort of factory line mechanism, but you're actually slowing yourself down. Doing like major areas like I was doing there where I would do them all in one color with the airbrush and then move the next one. Or if you're doing, if you're like blocking out colors, that's being efficient, sure. But when it comes to small details, you're better to just have your palette prepared. As you can see here, what I've got, like I'll need to get the top of his pants, this little area right here. Uh, so I've already got the blues to do that. Uh, I need to get his belt, so I've already got the browns to do that. I need to do his boots, so I've already got the grays to do that, right? And that kind of stuff. Like, you want to make sure that you're not, uh, because you're going to end up spending just as much time literally moving and fishing around for the models and getting paints out. Whereas if you just put it all on at once, one by one, and go, especially with little details, it will actually be more efficient. Um, because you just end up, you end up, there's such a thing as segmenting a task too much. So, um, so let's go ahead and I'll show you what I'm going to do with this guy. Uh, so let's get him in camera here. We're going to start with the boots. So we grab some of that gray and I'm going to talk about some of the things we do for speed painting here. So here on his boots, you know, I'm going to use a rather, like I didn't really thin this very much. I just put on the gray, we slap it around. I'm using a big brush. So tip number one, when you're doing this kind of thing, use a bigger brush. Then we're gonna do some wet blending. So I'm gonna grab the lighter gray, come up on the parts that I wanna get highlighted. I'm gonna wipe that. I'm gonna grab some of that olive flesh, that light color. And then we're gonna wet blend that right into the top and right into the top of that. And in there, wipe the brush a little, bring more of that other color back up. And then we just kind of smooth it out. Then we're gonna grab some of the dark. I've also got some Payne's gray ink there that was off camera, but it's there. We'll kind of bring that around. And then we'll just kind of wipe the brush there. And then we'll just bring that all together. If I want to reinforce a little more, grab a little more of that white gray. And there we go. And then I basically have this blending and everything I need already done. No need to go back. I didn't have to do 20 steps. I just have the whole thing ready to go. And that's what I mean when I say like you can just be more efficient like this using some clever tricks. So that way the boots already ready, everything's highlighted, it's ready to go. If you still don't like where you're at, we can always grab a little more, smooth it. Like you can work while wet for a while. So you can work back and forth a little. And 
and just kind of smooth out. And then we do the other boot. So once again, we work rather thick with that initial base layer because you want this night, you want, again, I'm not thinning this. There's no water beyond a slight amount of moisture in my brush. People get obsessed with painting with very thin paint when really the key is to just keep it moving around. And this thicker base coat will actually help you when it comes time to wet blending it in because you're going to be pulling off as much paint as you're putting on. So yet again, we'll just kind of push some of that gray there. We'll get some of that lighter white. We'll get his little toesy here. Get the bottom of that boot. A little bit right there, All right? Then we just kind of wipe that down, bring that back up into the top of the brush. We just kind of draw that together and do a nice smooth blend. And if we end up a little too light, we just add a little bit of that original color back. Grab a little bit of our deepest shadow. And then we just kind of smooth that together. And boy, that guy's boots are done. All right, so that kind of like wet blending trick is just a good way to go about something like this. It just makes your life a lot easier when it comes to uh, when it comes to getting something like this done. Especially when we're talking about a speed painted army like this, right? Where what we're aiming for here is fast. So yet again, same thing with his little uh, the this whatever on the back of the this thing. We go for all of that. We get that all nice and gray. Then we grab some of the lighter gray. Put that up there. Then we grab some of the darker. Put that on the bottom. And bada bing, we've got a nice little thing there. Now there's also some little strappy lines in between there. So I can take my just pure ink and I can just very quickly trace some of those lines and bring some of those shadows up. So that way we've got those nice and picked out. We can also take a little bit of that pure white or pure olive, I should say, it's olive flesh. And we can just really carefully nab the top of each of those and kind of bring that down a little bit. And there we go. Boom. Done. Fast. Easy. That's what we want. Just rocking and rolling right around this guy. You know, next up we've got our leather belts. So we're going to go for a little bit of that mahogany. Another thing I see people often freak out about is stuff like this where you can't quite reach that thing in there because it's under his arm. You know what I'm doing about that? Nothing. Because, look, if you're trying to compete for, like, some kind of painting award, sure. Go nuts. Go all the way. Don't, don't hesitate on anything. If you're going for a speed paint, if you're trying to get your army on the table for something, then don't worry about it. If you can't see it, unless you, if you can't see the spot, unless you turn the fig in some ridiculous direction, like I have to go like, I have to hold on, where, where, oh, 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 oh. Just leave it alone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like no one else can see it either. So why are you freaking out about it? When it comes to the the leather, we'll do a little extra, we'll do a little extra touch. We'll take some of our pure ivory here, our olive flesh, which is a very ivory color. And I'm actually gonna come in and I'm just gonna do a little hashing right along the bottom of his belt. So we're just gonna do, 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 do. Oftentimes little details like this will go a long way. And I know I just said if you're speed painting, why would you waste time on stuff like this? Well, cause it makes me happy. Do you have to do this kind of step? Nah. But it's pretty easy because I like stuff like this where it's not careful painting. It's just dragging your brush around in kind of a random pattern. 
Doing stuff like that elevates the paint job while being fun, because you don't have to be careful. Anything where I have to be careful and really focus up, that's what I try to avoid when I'm speed painting. So now we've got those, those uh, little hashy hashes there, and they're real rough, but that's okay. We're gonna take a little bit of our, uh, our brown, our lighter brown. We're gonna thin that down with some water. I'm just gonna go right over the top of that. And you can see then we get that nice texture that just shows through a little bit while still maintaining the color of the of the belt. If you want, you can also take a little shadow so we can do we can mix in a little bit of that uh, that blue black into that red brown mahogany. And we can draw some of that shadow right across the middle to kind of reinforce that area. Another trick for doing uh, these sorts of things, like for when you're uh, when you're trying to work quickly on an army like this, I see people get out like 80 different kinds of paints. They're like, oh, well, now I'm doing, you know, leather, so I've got to get out my exact leather recipe. Okay. Like, sure, I guess you could. Or I've used the same color to highlight three different things in a row, and it actually only makes the fig look more cohesive. So again, little tricks like that. Use a universal highlight, like the flesh, the pants, the boots, and the uh, the flesh, the pants, the boots, and now the belt. All of these have the same olive flesh highlight, which actually, one, makes the model look more cohesive because it looks like it's standing in the same light. And two, uh, is way easier because I only need to have one type of paint on my palette. I'm not digging for anything. I'm not looking for anything. I'm just literally, uh, I'm just literally moving along, happy as a clam. Now grab it one more time. Let's grab a little more of that olive. And guess what? We're gonna just go like do do do. Grab it right on there, get a little highlight. And there we go. That's all done. We'll get a little bit right there. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Am I trying to edge the whole thing? No. Do I care if I have little spots missing? Nope. Because it can only help. Okay. And so all of a sudden, you know, all those nice details are done. Then I can switch up to a nice little bit of a sharper brush. Can take some of that, uh, that olive flesh yet again, same color. Nothing's changed, still using the same color. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna go boop, boop. And we're gonna hit all those teeth, all his teethies. We're also gonna get that eyeball. The one thing that's always bothered me about ogres is they have such tiny eyeballs. Why are their eyeballs so tiny on a model that's this big? Never made any sense to me. They have like eyes that are smaller than Empire Dude's eyes. I'm gonna draw some quick lines here in the beard with this ivory. Just sketch out some nice, thin, sharp lines. So that, that way that stands out. No, that's not gonna be our final color, don't worry. Don't worry. I saw you freaking out. Don't freak out. It's all right. We're gonna grab a little bit of our uh, skeleton horde contrast. Perfect for tasks like this. You can also, by the way, use this. I could have used this for the belt as well to cover over your like your hashing back here. It's a very nice, you know, using contrast paint's a great way you, so you can paint over with the ivory and then just cover it over with that. So then I'm just gonna bring some of that contrast down there. There we go. And now he's got a nice sandy brown uh, goatee or whatever. I can keep playing with that if I want. I could let it dry. I could do something else. I can take a little bit of this. And maybe we grab just a tiny bit of that red. 
and we kind of go around the base of the teeth there so the teeth aren't so perfectly white. All right, we just toss a little color in there and we grab a little more of that red brown. All my color choices here were very intentional. And then we're going to come in and just hit that bottom lip nice and gentle. A lot of boom. The lip has some color, the beard has some color, fast, easy. Okay. Last thing we want to do on this bad boy before we send him off is we're going to take a little bit of that ink with a little bit of flow aid to help us out. We always want a little flow improver and our nice sharp brush. So we get that full of flow aid, then we get some of that, that blue black ink and back here on where his little butt flap is. I'm just, see I'm just tracing over the top. You could use a wash for this as well, but I like an ink because it's actually going to leave like real pigment deposited. In the end, like a, a wash is very weak, whereas inks are very highly pigmented and they already flow very well. So then I get that nice outline on there. I can come back and do the same thing over here, by the way, now that this is dry. I can reinforce my lines here. Okay. I could even, if I feel a little saucy, come up here and put a little shadow beside his face. Why not? When things take a half a second, it's fun to just touch and add a little bit of, little bit of heat on there. Then we come in, what color? Oh, guess what? It's that same ivory again. We're back again. Guess who's back? Back again. Ivory's back. Tell a friend. All right. So then we just hit each one of those. And now he has his little, his little pants tied together. And all the details on him are done, other than the metal, obviously, right? And the metal we always do separately. So, and that guy's ready to go. So I can then just set him to the side, look at that. I say, okay, I spent about 15 minutes on him, and then I multiply that out times, you know, the X number of overs I've got and say, okay, yeah, that's the appropriate amount of time to spend. I'm gonna feel comfortable with that. I'm gonna be able to replicate that. And uh, in the amount of time I've allotted for myself, it lets me then, like I get a good looking guy with some different things going on, and I can then move on to uh, spend more time on something like the characters, something like that. Because rank and file dudes are just rank and file dudes. So. I'm gonna carry on. We'll do all the details on all the ogres and then we'll be back because we got more to do. All right, so let's see where we're at. So currently, uh, everything except the characters, all the details have been picked out, painted, etc. Um, I paused the clock at eight hours and 54 minutes. Uh, so we're doing all right. I thought I'd share a couple, see where we are. So like here's uh, one of the man eaters. Uh, one of the old Empire man-eaters. I like this guy a lot, so he's fun. Uh, here's one of the lead belchers. He's got a little knoblar on his shoulder. You can see where he's at. And then here's our friend we've used for all our examples that you saw earlier that I finished up. So there we go. Everybody's looking pretty nice for that work. The whole army's up to this level. Like I said, I did leave the characters out. So for example... Here's like one of the butchers, he's still back at that level. And that's because even when you're speed painting with the characters, it's a good idea to just take them apart, you know, do all this stuff that you're gonna do basic first, but then take them out and you wanna do them a little separately because even when you're, when you're speed painting the army, who cares, move as fast as you can, you know, get stuff done, cheat in every way you can, just get completed. But with your people who matter, with the center characters, that's when it's time to spend a little bit of extra time, okay? So there are four characters in the army, a tyrant, a butcher, a slaughtermaster, and a hunter that I have here. So we're gonna spend a little more time on them when we're, when we're all good. But next up, we're gonna do, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're at nine hours, we're feeling pretty good. So on my palette here, I have some deep blue of my original blue that I used for the pants. We've got some um, some blue-black ink, some Payne's Gray. We have some Bugman's Glow and a little bit of Flow Improver. 
And uh, we're gonna put tattoos on these bad boys because why not? Uh, we gotta, they gotta, ogres gotta have their tats. Gotta have the tats. Let me put these guys back. Okay, we'll quickly get him onto his base. All right, so there we go. And we'll talk about how we do these tattoos. We are gonna restart the clock for this one. All right, since we're painting, it counts. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a relatively sharp brush and I'm gonna grab some of this blue, a little bit of that ink to get it flowing. Rinse off the brush there. We're gonna grab a little bit of that flesh, mix that in a little more. Have a little more ink, to add a little more black to it. Okay. We're adding the flesh because tattoos are somewhat transparent. They sink into the skin, translucent, I should say. And uh, by desaturating out the color, it makes it feel more like that. And we're probably not going to have time to go and, um, and glaze back over all these. So we're going one shot and then we're done. So then we mix in some Flow Aid. Pull just a little bit more blue in there. Okay. Cool. All right, so here we've got our ogre. So let's go for the classic maw. That's the e that's an easy one. So we, what we're gonna do first is just sketch in some lines real quick. And you notice I'm just jumping right into this. And the reason I'm just jumping right into this is because, one, it's an ogre. If I was doing a tattoo on, you know, something, some creature that would be more careful about its tats, I might be more careful. But the reality is I don't think ogres have the best tattoo artists. They're probably not plotting it out too much. So, something that gets the general idea across. Is gonna get there. And just like that. Boom, now we've broken up that massive area of flesh. We can fix that up just a little bit here and there. Balance out our triangles. And there we go. Now he's got a little little maw tat and he's ready to go. You could do other things. So for example, maybe on his other arm over here, ogres are kind of the ultimate bros. So maybe he's got a little, uh, let's give him one of these guys. We'll go all the way around his, uh, his bicep here. And then we'll do some spiky lines off it. Cause he's gotta have his barbed wire tat, yo. Right? Sorry, I was a little out of focus there. So there you go, now he's got a little barbed wire tat on that arm. Got a little maw tat there. And he's good. We can move him along. So now I'm just gonna continue just doing fun tats over a lot of their skin. Some of them will have some face tats, cause why not? We'll go nuts, we'll see what we can do. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll let the clock run and continue on. Back in a minute. All right, so we're done with that step. And uh, I paused the clock again, but as you can see, we are just under 12 hours in, uh, and I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, we're right about where I think we'd wanna be. 
Uh, all the tattoos are done. Basically, these guys are all detailed out, except for, of course, the metal. Uh, everything's looking, I think, pretty sharp. Now those tattoos are like really strong. They're really vibrant. See here, this guy's got a little swirly, twirly giggy go going on. Whatever. The iron guts, I went for like the angular sort of tattoos like that. The lead belchers, I did a lot more circulars, mixed in like maws and tusks all over the place, that kind of thing. Just having fun. So uh, now it's time for uh, a stage that is, is particularly less fun. Uh, something that's going to be one of the longer ones we've done, which is the metals. Uh, and what we're going to do here with the metals is we're not going to mess around with trying to do a singular base coat of everything and, and just kind of get everything going. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually varnish the whole force real quick. Uh, and the reason I do that is because uh, it just locks everything in. And sometimes when you're working with metals, you'll get metal paint somewhere where it shouldn't be. And all of these, you know, some of these things have a slightly different finish because of the different paints that I used or whatever. Some was done more with washes, some was done with whatever. So we need to get them all evened out before we start applying metals because we don't varnish metals. So everything's going to get a quick varnish. Uh, I'll actually probably use a little bit of a mix of a satin and a matte varnish just because I want them to have, I don't want them to be completely matte in this case. Uh, it'll help remove some of the like airbrushy look if they have a slight satin sheen to them. You know, you can always set whatever you want with it. Then we're going to come in and I'll show you how we're going to do the metals basically all in sort of one big fell swoop by type. So what I mean is we're going to do all the steel the whole way through, including all the shading, highlighting and weathering. And then we'll do the uh, and then we'll do any golds and stuff like that. So. Uh, back in a moment after we're varnished and uh, I'll restart the clock for the varnishing obviously and we'll come back and we'll do the metals. All right everybody's varnished everybody's dry and now we have a new little palette we've got ourselves and this will be our metal palette. We work with a dry palette when we're working with metals because we don't want them polluting our wet palette. So what have I got here? Well right here I've got some Vallejo Metal Color Steel. The only metal acrylic paints we trust Vallejo Metal Color. Here I have some silver just for a brighter color. Down on the bottom I have some Pro Acryl Coal Black. Then I have some Pro Acryl Black Brown. I have some Secret Weapon Brown Rust right there. And then I have some Vallejo Game Effects Rust, which is a really nice color I like. So that's what we've got to work with. We're going to go ahead and just show what happens here. I'm just going to do the sword on camera. Uh, and then you can, so you'll be able to see how the whole process kind of, kind of works here. Okay. So the idea here is we're going to work fast and we're going to work rough and we're going to use a big brush that still has a point on it. Okay. So we grab some of that steel. I'm going to bring my, my dirty paper towel in here so you can see what I'm doing. We wipe off some of the excess. We get that steel on there. Nice and quick like. Nice big brush, few seconds, boom, steel's done. This guy's all bumpy because, you know, I didn't bother to strip all these. This is just a fun speed paint army project and the original primer was rough. But hey, that's all right. So, grab some steel, work that there. Okay, now we're just gonna grab a little bit of that silver. We're gonna work it right along the edge and we're going to work it right along the edge. We're going to wipe our brush. We're just going to bring those two together. Okay. We need to grab a little more of the original steel. We can. And there we go. So now we get a nice little transition there. And we're going to grab some of that black. A little more. There we go. You see how I'm always just working, just working fast, working wet on wet, not worried about it. If something gets messed up, who cares? We can fix it. It's meant to be a dirty, rusty sword, so it's fine. Okay. So we reinforce a little bit of that black. OK, 
Okay. Rinse the brush real quick. And we're gonna grab some of that brown. We're just gonna start kind of stippling that in there. Focusing more toward the back. It's still quite dark. There's still some of the metal paint in my brush. That's what I want. We're gonna grab some of the bigger brown, the more brown as it were. Again, just stipple it around. We're gonna take some of that brown and grab some of that orange. Get ourselves a nice orangey brown color. Just kind of, again, work it pretty randomly around. Always go back and forth. And then we're going to take a little bit of that orange itself pure but still on a dirty brush so it'll naturally mix in and we're just gonna slap adapt that top edge a little bit. Rust will tend to gather around edges where there's maximum surface area and exposure and it will tend to not form where there are reasons why the blade would be continually scraped clean i.e. along the edge. Okay then final step We're gonna take a nice sharp brush. We're just gonna grab some of that silver. Wick off the excess. And then we'll just kind of create some little bit of little bitty lines here. Where that's been scraped from this ogre going to battle. The key with these is you really need something like metal color where it's so liquidy that you can do these ultra sharp thin lines because if these lines are thick, they just look immediately fake. So with regular metal, like with some other company's metals, it's gonna be very hard to achieve this same thing. I'll warn you right now. Like this is one of the reasons I like these paints is because they're basically like, they have the consistency of an ink. So they can actually do sharp, thin lines. Okay. Then we're going to take that silver on that same brush. And we're just going to give ourselves a nice little edge. Nice little edge there. And there we go. Boom. We got ourselves a nice rusty, crusty, uh, but still interesting sword. Just that easy. Okay. So we'll do the same thing around their gut plates and around his, you know, his iron fist over here. Same principle, but I'm working all the metals at once. Now for some of these smaller areas, like these little bracelet things here or stuff like that, I'm not gonna go to all that trouble. I'll be a lot simpler with the application there. What we're looking to do is really focus in on the areas of large attention. So things like the blade, the plate, these fists, you know, stuff like that. If it's a smaller thing, we can be a little quicker with it. We don't need to maybe go through all the steps. So, this is the long part. We gotta settle in, folks. We gotta, we got a lot to do here. So, there you go. That's uh, that's working the metals and how we work them fast and rough to get a good looking effect quick. And uh, that's all the steel. I'll come back when I'm done and we'll do the gold, okay? All right. All right, we're in the final stretches now. So you can see all of the metallics are done. Uh, we've got some rusty, crusty goodness on our swords and things like that. And that leaves gold, gold. Always believe in your soul. So um, for gold, we're gonna do much the same here. Here, this right here is a three to two to one mix of Vallejo metal colors. So three copper to every two drops of gold to every one drop of pale burnt metal. And that gives me something that looks like that. This is just pure pale burnt metal to highlight. This is a little mahogany and black. Uh, so more red brown color, more reddish color and coal black, both from uh, Proacryl. And then over here, we've got some Vallejo game effects verdigris. So we can do a little bit of that 
So, uh, here we've got this big Rune Maw statue. I, there's not a lot of gold in this army. Like, ogres aren't exactly stacked in ostentatious wealth here. Well, my Slaughter Master will be, because he's actually a Paymaster instead of the Slaughter Master. I'm, uh, I'm actually taking the idea that the reason that these ogres have figured out that money is worthwhile because they can use it to buy food as well. And so they've started hoarding money in addition to eating the people that they get it from. I mean, of course. Like, let's not be silly here. They're still ogres. But the point is they figured out if they don't eat the money, they can both, they can then actually use that to purchase even more food. So they get to eat the people and then take the people's stuff and use that to buy more food. It's really a win-win. So the my instead of a slaughter master, I have a paymaster who has a big pile of gold behind him. Uh, you'll see it when we get to the basing. It's fun. At any rate, so you can see what I'm doing here is just laying down a nice, nice layer of this stuff. We're not worrying about it too much. Notice I'm not being real super careful. We're keeping the brush moving. We're just flattening it out. As always, the coverage on Vallejo Metal Cloud, the thinness, the ease, the smoothness of the flow is always why we, why we use it because it's so simple and easy and clean and nice and amazing and the best. Yeah. All right, so there we got a nice base coat down of our kind of coppery gold color, which is what I want. All right, so let's get my base coat brush cleaned there. And then what's the same here? What we're gonna do is we're gonna wet our previous brush. We're gonna get just a little bit of that gold in there. And then I'm gonna mix in just some of that mahogany. Get a nice little mix of that paint plus the, the gold. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna just force some of that down into these recesses. Now you might say, well, Vince, why don't you just wash it? I, I don't wash it because I, I don't, I don't want to. No, because I don't want to ruin the shine. And putting non, uh, putting non-metallic medium that much over everything is just going to ruin it. Like you're just going to literally remove the metal effect. Washing metals is generally like your quickest road to, to making them not look like metal. So there you go. Uh, whereas instead I can do this and just easily force some of those shadows in and look how much more control of the light I have all of a sudden, right? So then I, you, what I did there while I was talking was just mix in a little black. We'll do it here on the back because that'll be a nice easy way to show it off. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and rinse the brush. And let's do the same thing. So let's take some of that gold just a little bit. We wick off some of the excess on a paper towel just off screen. Grab plenty of that mahogany. Now I have gold and then mahogany in my in my uh, brush. So then let's just start using the side of that brush. And then we can use that to just, we can get a little bit more of that gold in there. We'll push that up. Then let's grab a little bit of that black, just a little. You might say, Vince, you're crazy. You didn't wait for it to dry. Yeah, yeah, this is a speed paint, homie. We ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're here to do work. We're not here to sit around and watch paint dry. We're here to get an army painted. Now I got that nice transition there. Grab a little bit of that silver. Or sorry, it's technically pale burnt metal, but it's effectively a highly silver color. And look at that. Bam! Look at that beautiful light reflection in just a few seconds. Let's take that silver on the other side. Let's go ahead and And there we go. 
now we've got a nice, bright, shiny, reflective thing. Copper thing. Now, if you want to go a little farther, we want to add a little bit of uh, visual interest. Let's take a little bit of that verdigris, which much more of that came out of my uh, bottle. This is the Vallejo verdigris, by the way. I just happen to like it a little better than the nilic oxide. We can take a little bit of that. And we just kind of force it around and we get that nice light green touch to some of the areas there. And boom, easy. So one of the tricks with, with painting like this, just as a, I want to sort of at this point in the video, take a quick moment to just talk about, you know, things that I know are wrong. When I'm working around on this, I'll see stuff like this, the back of his thing. Like when I painted the front chain mail and rusted it, I'll see stuff where like the back right here isn't painted. You know what I do with that? Nothing. Just nothing. Because it's, again, we're speed painting. Like, people are gonna see your army like this on the table. They're not seeing that stuff. If you're, if you're trying to win a painting competition or something like that, great, you shouldn't be speed painting. You should be taking your time, right? This is about, I've got, uh, you know, a week or two, and I need, I want to get a nice, good-looking army on the table. Okay, I can help you out there, All right? So we just want to make sure we set our expectations accordingly. The other thing I'll say is, when it comes to little details like this, like this little cross guard here on his sword, right? I'm not going to kill myself with all that same highlighting and shading you just saw me do, right? Maybe I'll take a little bit of that black... Maybe we'll work a little bit of that in, just a tiny amount. Maybe I'll grab a little bit of that pale burnt metal. And maybe we'll just highlight that and the rivet on that side and we'll call it a day. And bada boom, right? Like, we don't need to go nuts. I'm not gonna try to edge highlight all that and everything. Not on a project like this. So, set your expectations accordingly. Focus on the stuff people are actually going to notice. One of the things that I see with people waste a lot of time with when they paint their figs in general, whether they're speed painting or not, is they're like, they talk about trying to make every detail perfect. And my question always is, oh, were you were you uh, trying to submit this to Golden Demon? No? Then why are you wasting your life? Because most people will never notice that kind of stuff you're doing. And if you say, yeah, but I'll know. Okay. No, you won't. Like, because you will forget. Do you think I know the imperfections of my armies that I painted, you know, <laughs> uh, that I painted like three years ago or a year ago or two weeks ago? No, you know when you're painting that fig at that moment. So my advice is just, you know, relax, keep it relatively simple, and, uh, and keep going. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep rocking on. Uh, and keep painting this guy, or these guys. This guy's done now. He's totally done. Yay! And I like these rivets on the back. Sorry, these rivets on the back. I'll probably hit those with steel and call it a day. So there you go. All right, time to do all the gold, and then we're done with that. All these ogres uh, are almost done. We have one more final step we always do in speed painting. So back in a moment, I'll tell you about what our final step always should be. All right, so everything is now... Uh, been hit with the gold. You can see we've got one of our standard bearers here. And uh, basically we're done. But wait, there's one more step. So whenever you're speed painting like this and you're just flying through things like you've seen me do so, there's generally one final thing you want to do. And that final thing you want to do is you want to take a look around the model and you just want to make sure that you've gotten kind of everything and that there's no obvious details or something you missed. Because when we're working fast, like this, it can be easy for you to sort of miss something. So like right there on the back of that banner, those little nuts and bolts, you know, whatever they are, aren't uh, metal. So I have all my paint still out and ready. So we take a little bit of a darker steel color. We just come in and we go boop, boop. And there we go, hit those up. Bang, bang. Now they're metal, they're good to go, right? 
And so you just make a little final check over of the miniature before it's done. And then when it's done, you set it to the side. So like we look here on this guy, my lead belcher, right? One of them. And I look around him and I see like, okay, these, the sticks of what's in the, uh, the gun here aren't uh, colored wood. Okay. So let's grab a little bit of brown. And we'll just hit that real quick. Again, we don't have to worry about it being too amazing. It's a little minor detail. Realistically, no one would probably notice. Right? And then we've got those covered. And if we want to do a little bit extra, sure, because why not? We can mix some of that brown in with a little bit of white, and we can just very quickly, a little bit of ivory, and give that just a little, little quick touch of a highlight, just so it's got something going on. Right? And there we go. And we look around him, look around him, really look at all the details, make sure we've got everything covered how we want. In fact, I'm looking at the screen right now where this is recording instead of looking at the miniature because oftentimes that, like we see things differently when we look at a screen. So you can do things like take a picture of your army and uh, look at it in the picture and see how it looks because it will look different. You will notice things on a picture you don't notice in reality because it just changes the, your, the nature of your perception. So real quick, I'm gonna give everybody a look over and it's uh, and and we're doing really good, by the way. Uh, so we're right on time. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with where we're at in this process. Here's where we're at time-wise: 17 hours, 14 minutes to get to this point. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty good. So now we're just in the cleanup stage. Then we got a base. Stick them to the base, and you're gonna see how I do the basing when we're doing an entire army's bases all at once. So back in a moment with a whole bunch of bases. All right, so here we are. Uh, we're currently at 18 hours and 41 minutes. Uh, so we got a little more than five hours remaining and we gotta get all the bases done. So all the bases are here. Uh, there's a lot more, but this is just some of them in the shot, obviously. They've been zenithal and then I just shot them with a little thin coat of contrast brown just to get some color on them. Now, how are we gonna paint these bases fast and still make them look good? Well, the answer is we're gonna rely on our old friends dry brushing and washing. I'm not normally a fan of, of these techniques uh, to just be randomly applied, but they're very useful techniques is when you apply them in the right place. And something like a base with a lot of little rough texture and stuff like that, this is the right place. So here on my palette, I have a mix of, I have some skeleton bone, I have some beige red from Vallejo, and I have some medium flesh tone. Notice how this is very pink, this one's very Caucasian flesh, and this is very yellow white. And you can see I've just got three big globs of that over here. Uh, and the idea is we wanna mix those up a little bit. So tip number one is get the right dry brush. If you're using something like this, this is junk. Get rid of this. This is, this is, this is rookie dry brush. We don't need this. Let's get rid of that. We need something bigger. Something like this. So this is a makeup brush, and you'll notice how big it is. This is the kind of thing you wanna be using, right? So, we're gonna take a little base here. We've got a, a paper towel over on the side. I assume you all know how we dry brush. So, let's grab some of that flesh tone to start. We're gonna wipe it off a lot on our paper towel. Grab a base. And then we just start working it. Maybe we grab a little bit of that white. Not cleaning the dry brush in between. We'll let these colors get up in each other's business. And maybe we give a little bit of that. Focus especially on like those rocks. Okay. Cool, sounds good. Looks like we're in the right place. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take something like, oh, I don't know, let's say some Magrax Earthshade. But you can use anything. You can use any wash. In fact, as you'll see in a moment, I would encourage you to mix it up. So then we grab a big wash brush. In fact, 
We can do better than that. Now we got a big wash brush, there we go. Don't hold back, bigger brushes equal faster painting, especially when you're doing stuff like this and you don't need to be careful. Stop using little baby brushes, especially for tasks like this, okay? All right, so now we got some wash in there. Starting to get those colors darkened, picking out those recesses. You know, often when you're doing a wash on a model, you're like, oh, you gotta, you know, avoid pooling and stuff like that. When I'm working here on a base like this, nah, I'm, I'm fine with pooling. I'm okay with it, All right? What else are we gonna do? Well, what do we have right here about our old friend, the pigment palette? So let's just set that down on the shot and you'll see what I'm gonna do. This is still obviously wet. There's washes all over it. I don't care. I'm gonna grab some of my pigment. We're just gonna drop some of this around in some places. Let's grab a little bit of that dark. And then we'll take our other crappy brush and some of that wash. And we're just going to kind of smush it around. All right. And that's going to be really strong right now. Like that's real red. And that's okay. Then we let that one dry and we move on to the next one. And what's going to happen is I'm going to do all of these. And then I'm going to come back and dry brush it again over the top and wash it again. I'm going to throw some green pigment on there or something like that. Right. Uh, if there's little rocks or details, that's when I might get out a little bit of actual paint. You know, maybe with these little dry uh, areas here, maybe we grab a little bit of that bone white we were dry brushing with, and we actually like come in and specifically just kind of pick out a few of those edges and make it a little more, right? So it looks a little more cracked. Maybe we do the same up here with this rock. So you can just pick out a few little details and suddenly you've made a big difference. So this is just gonna be a whole lot of washing and dry brushing. So the clock's running, I'm gonna keep working, just start knocking out these bases, just like you see here, throwing around colors. The key is, I see a lot of people who just have like some brown and that's it. Don't let your bases just be brown. Through either your washes or your pigments, you know, if I didn't have pigment, you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna wash with some Ethonian camo shade at some point, because I wanna work some green tones in there. I'll wash it with some Reichland flesh shade at some point, because I wanna get some of that more red in there. You know, you can get out like some of your contrast paints and go a little nuts. Whatever you wanna do, the point is, is that just have fun, play around, use some different colors, uh, and, and make those bases more interesting. So I will come back and we'll finish up with just some final steps and then we'll take a look at the army and hopefully we'll do that all in the next couple hours. And we're done. So there we go. And the clock says 22 hours, 44 seconds and 0.22 whatever things. 22 hours, 44 seconds. We got it. Uh, this obviously isn't the whole force. This is as much as I could fit in camera. There's more ogres over to the side. There will be shots of everything here at the end of the video. So there you go. That's uh, how we speed paint a whole army in 24 hours. I thought at the end I'd kind of talk about this project and why it was fun and, and sort of summarize the tips. So if you just skip to the end or anything, hey, how you doing? Welcome, glad to have you. But at any rate, the idea that you can't speed paint something to a relatively high quality, I just don't find to be true. To perfection, sure, of course not. There's, there's, These guys have so many errors and flaws and things that I didn't do or wish I had done better on them. But at the same time, I think they're perfectly serviceable. Like when I look at these guys, when I take Homeboy here, my standard bearer, like he's got a nice little banner you know, he's got some good weathering, he's got a nice gut plate, we've got good metallics and, you know, visual interest, he's got a cool tat on his back. Like, that's cool stuff. And I'll be happy to, like, put him on the table for a fun game. Uh, I think that 
it shows what you can accomplish when you use the right tools, have the right plan, and go in with the right techniques. So the summaries that I would give is, number one, I mean, you know, an airbrush is obviously a powerful tool for this, but something like contrast paints or thin glazes with a brush over a zenithal could achieve a lot of the same stuff. If you saw me do the uh, paint an army in a week, previous video I did, that's what I did there. Very little of that was airbrushed. So, I mean, obviously the airbrush can speed it up, but you know, there you go. Number two is pick your project well. Um, I could do this because this is ogres. Even even in like this is only like I said part of the army, but it's just not that many figures. Even so, um, you know it's less than 50 figures all in. Uh, so set your expectations accordingly. Something like ogres or iron jaws or you know whatever, uh, an elite force, a skirmish force. If you're playing a skirmish game, you know it's not AOS. Something like that is just going to respond to this kind of technique a lot better because you've got. Uh, bigger space to work with, uh, you know, Stormcast would be another great way to do this with. Stormcast would be fantastic for this kind of thing. Um, so just think about, you know, sort of the figures you're gonna choose if you wanna do this. But even if you can't do this sort of thing in a day, the reality is is that this kind of speed painting, these tricks of like how I built up the primary areas with the airbrush very quickly, then I went through and did the details. And when I did the details, I'm working with a big brush, right? And I'm working broadly with a lot of quick, wet blends. Uh, and then I'm more or less stopping. Doing things like that wet blending is going to be where you want to be. Uh, practice that technique. It is the speed muscle builder, right? And can really help you get a lot farther, a lot faster. Um, know when to say something doesn't matter. <laughs> so in any kind of figures like this, there's little things that are kind of hidden away and in places. And you know, I'm sure if I like flipped these guys up underneath, you can see how dark he is still on the bottom, right? Because I didn't bother to really put a lot of shading down there. But this is how you look at the fig normally. And there it looks like he's got real nice shadows. Like that's great. Does that look too heavy? Yeah, of course, but who cares, right? That's not how you look at a figure for an army. So this kind of stuff is what I mean. Figure out what you can ignore, figure out your wet blending and your tactics that's going to, to help you achieve uh, you know, areas that you can't do with your airbrush or your contrast quickly. Uh, work with a bigger brush, work with a limited palette. Um, I did not use a lot of colors for these guys. I think they're still visually interesting, but I kept it simple and used that to work quickly. Um, you know, work off your wet palette because there your paints are gonna remain active and you can keep going. Now, most people probably don't have 24 hours in a single weekend to paint a whole army like I did here. And I understand that. But most people could find 24 hours in a month to paint an army, right? Uh, if you can find an hour most days of the month, you could do this, same thing that I just did. So, you know, there's, my point is that you can do this. There's no special magical skill I have other than just reps and practice. And that's not magic, that's just time. You can do it too. And whatever your outcome is, any painted model is better than an unpainted model. Period, every time. Never let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Get your models, your units, your army painted. There will always be another figure. There will always be another army. There will always be another chance to improve. Uh, and I'm a big believer in deliberate practice and slowing down and taking your time and learning things. That has value too. Please do not mistake that I'm saying you should speed paint everything because you shouldn't. But you should be able to have confidence that you can accomplish this kind of stuff and you can get your armies painted if that's what you want. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, that being said, there'll be some shots here at the end of the army. I'll put them up on the table and take some photos and things like that. Uh, put them in the light box. I'll, I'll, this will be a, a deluge of pictures probably. Uh, but at any rate, I very much appreciate you coming on this journey with me. Uh, I'm happy we made it with two hours to spare. Uh, was a, what a fun project and hey, now I've got another army to put on the table, so that's super cool. But uh, thank you all for watching. Give it a like if you liked this. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, but as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one and we'll see you next time.